Hello and welcome to Saltwire Today for Tuesday, January 31st. I'm your host, Kate Walker. The province is taking steps to try to improve health care by increasing more services at local pharmacies. It was announced today the Community Pharmacy Primary Care Clinics program will be piloted in 12 pharmacies across Nova Scotia, with more set to open in the spring. Appointments begin as of tomorrow. This extra bit, this allowing pharmacists to go from there to their full legal scope, is, is being funded as a project right now uh, it's by the province as under, so we have a, we have a uh, within our agreement with the province, we have the opportunities to do pilot programs, and so this is within that agreement, and the pharmacies will be, fund uh, will be funded a flat rate per month to participate in the pilot. What this means is pharmacists in these clinics will have the ability to dedicate time to patients with common illnesses and people who are on medications for chronic diseases like diabetes, cardiovascular and lung disease. They'll also be able to prescribe the medication. The province says pharmacists will now also provide care for strep throat, including testing, diagnosis and treatment. So what we want to look at towards is a time uh, when in pharmacies across the province uh, uh, for the, the range of uh, conditions which have already been established to be within the proper scope of care uh, of, of a pharmacist that this, uh, that this scope of practice be given effectiveness and become the effective scope of practice so that you'll be able to receive that service anywhere in the province. Pharmacists will be paid more for the added care. It's been a messy day across parts of Nova Scotia with the snowfall making for a challenging commute for many on the roads. But we haven't seen many days like today so far this winter. Temperatures this winter season have been well above normal, especially the month of January, where it's likely we'll finish the month five to six degrees above average, likely one of the warmest Januaries on record, if not the warmest. The most recent daily temperature record broken was yesterday in Shearwater, where the temperature hit 9.9 .9 degrees Celsius, beating the previous record of 8.9 degrees back in 2013. Thaws in January aren't uncommon, but we have not had a sustained period of cold weather this month. Month. But a real taste of winter is still on the way and a big cool down is coming. According to our weather specialist Alistair Alders, a trough containing very cold Arctic air will sink south and east Friday night into Saturday, sending temperatures into the minus 20s by Saturday morning with wind chills into the minus 30s, possibly minus 40s for parts of the province. Highs on Saturday are forecast to be in the minus teens with better wind chills still making it feel colder, but it will be short lived with temperatures moderating sunny Sunday into Monday. Many Maritimers woke up to the sound of an emergency alert this morning, warning that 911 phone lines were down. The system went down around 7 a.m. and was back up in around two and a half hours. Until the service was back up and running, residents in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick and PEI were given a series of numbers to call instead. The Emergency Management Office held a media availability at 2 o'clock this afternoon, where the minister responsible for the province's EMO said the 911 system that's been operating operating for more than 30 years has never had such a problem in Nova Scotia. At that point, the cause of the shutdown was still being investigated. About 40 people showed up this morning to voice their frustrations with closures to the Soldiers Memorial Hospital Emergency Department in Middleton. I'm here because it's important to have emergency care 24-7. The rally was organized after concerned residents formed a Facebook group to help find a solution to the situation in Annapolis County. We don't need less of these, we need more. You know, we've got to keep these things going. Got, the government has to make some tough decisions on where they spend the money. And, and Tim Houston has heard me say this over and over and over. Let's stop some of the government waste. The emergency department has gone through frequent closures during the past year due to staff shortages in the region. The emergency department is open 7.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. daily, but a nationwide need for health care providers has resulted in it being closed at various times, which are posted online at Nova Scotia Health's temporary closures page. I'm certainly feeling the emotion and the anxiety from everyone. Uh, you know, with Annapolis Royal closing their merge and now Middleton on the brink, it certainly put people, uh, they're stressed, they're anxious, uh, they're scared. It supports this community, but it's also a critical access point for everybody along uh, the 101 here. 
and uh, we're going to keep fighting to push uh, the Houston government to reopen this and ensure that it's properly staffed. The department was closed today, but scheduled to reopen tomorrow. When the department does close, it leaves people without an emergency room within Annapolis County's borders. Residents are forced to travel to Kentville or Digby, which are 50 and 80 kilometers away from Middleton. An update now to a fire at a popular Halifax restaurant yesterday. The stubborn goat on Grafton Street was filled with smoke yesterday afternoon. Today, staff are saying the fire may have started in a duct and that it will be at least four to six weeks before it reopens. Uh, smoke damage is very hard because it gets into absolutely everything. It gets into fabric, it gets into the wood, it gets into the paint. And it's going to take hours and hours and hours. And, you know, also it's, uh, it's a bit of a shame because when you close, you give all of your, your clientele, you give them an opportunity to go find a new place to hang out. So it's, uh, it's, it's a loss of business. It's a loss of revenue for all of our staff. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll try and open up with a couple new surprises and uh, try and get everyone back and, and give them something to, to cheer for on our part. Luckily, everyone got out safe, but there is significant damage inside. They're now looking into assistance for the staff who are out of work. It's time now for a glimpse of today's Thinking Out Loud with Sheldon McLeod. Today, Sheldon is speaking with Dr. George Burden about a way to keep family doctors from retiring and firing their patients. And to the idea that you're suggesting to have uh, soon-to-be retiring physicians provided a stipend, a given some opportunity to help perhaps train or, or assist in, in that transfer. How likely do you feel it is that the premier is going to say, that's a great idea. Let's do it. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the premier uh, seems to be a pretty sensible guy. Um, and, uh, you know, I see this as a, a, an, an, an option that is going to bring doctors that would normally be gone at least partially back into the fold. Now, if you have 200 doctors that are going to retire completely and 100 of them say stay on and uh, provide, say, a, we have what are called APPs and a full-time equivalent is a certain number of patients of a certain age. So say my, I'm, I'm a 1.3. So say I came back as a 0.65, brought in another doctor as a 0.65 and decided to work on for two maybe five years, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be. And I, I know I've, uh, I, I know physicians that are in their eighties that are still quite productive. So we may decide to stay on, but you know, if you can keep a hundred doctors working half time, then you're talking a uh, hundred thousand patients or 50,000 patients. So you're talking substantial numbers that would not have a family doctor if, uh, if they stay on. And for Sheldon's full conversation, head to the opinion section of saltwire.com. Time now for the Atlantic Sports Wire, presented by Scott Squires. Geneva Marshall tried to get it in behind the net. The Lynx tried to move it up. When you're coming up through amateur sports, it's important to have good leaders, good mentors, and good coaches. Nellie Edwards is an assistant coach with the Cape Breton Lynx of the Maritime Major U18 Female Hockey League. Nellie, thanks for coming on the Atlantic Sports Wire. Tell me how you got involved with the Lynx. Yeah, so um, I have played scrub and amateur hockey for the last... Uh, I guess 10 years and I uh, made friends with Donnie Lake and uh, Jessica McDermott. We've known each other uh, for, like I say, quite a few years now. So um, it was brought to my attention, I guess, that Sonia is going to be needing an extra hand on uh, both the practice and uh, just the season. So I, I, I emailed her and um, I offered my services so that I'd be willing to assist in any way I could. And uh, she was, she was happy to bring me on. So I'm definitely enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be a part of the part of the Lynx. You're a Cape Bretoner. You're from Glace Bay. Tell me about uh, your early years playing hockey. You mentioned you played hockey yourself. Uh, who'd you play for and what position did you play? I started playing when I was six. Um, so I grew up with uh, playing Glace Bay minor hockey. Um, I played boys hockey, more or less right till uh, Kiwi, I believe. And um, we kind of segued. There was two teams, so um, I played half the season with boys, half the season with, uh, there was a girl team actually in Cox East in the county there. So, um, kind of started from there, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, and, and then there was the a major midget team, uh, came about, um, that I could really, uh, say no to the opportunity at that point. It was, uh, they were called the Ferguson's Firmatoy, uh, Screaming Eagles. Um, 
So uh, that team more or less evolved over time and now is the Cape Breton Lake. Nellie, thanks for your time today. Uh, wish you continued success as you play the rest of the season and get ready for the playoffs. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. In Halifax, I'm Scott Squires for the Atlantic Sports Wire. Now six on five as the penalty over. Pan save, rebound, they score! Thank you, Scott. On to weather now to see what's coming up in the forecast. We're going to check in now with our weather specialist, Alistair Alders. Thanks, Kate. Well, it was like a winter wonderland out here today. We had a weak low pressure system moving by that was delivering a light snowfall, but certainly enough to coat the ground and make uh, some roadways greasy. And what a difference today compared to yesterday. Record highs yesterday afternoon and then the snow today. But of course, that's typical Nova Scotia weather for you. We do have nicer but colder weather in the forecast for tomorrow. This evening we will drop down to about minus 5 and we'll have mainly cloudy skies with a chance of flurries but a chilly start waking up on Wednesday morning near minus 13 in land likely closer to minus 10 in the city but mainly sunny skies that wind chill though in the morning will be near minus 18 so do bundle up as we head into the afternoon lots of sunshine it's going to be a beautiful day just a bit chilly minus 7 the afternoon high with the wind chill near minus 10 but this isn't the blast of arctic air that everyone is talking about and temperatures will actually moderate through Thursday. Thursday and into early Friday as a weak disturbance will cross the region. It's Friday night through Saturday that this very cold Arctic air mass arrives and we will see temperatures plunging Friday night into Saturday morning down well into the minus 20s with wind chills in the minus 30s and maybe even for some into the minus 40s. This will be bone chilling cold that could prompt extreme cold warnings due to the fact that wind chills will be so bitter and we've only had one of those since they introduced that warning in 2014 at least for parts of the province. It could be dangerous wind chills that could certainly lead to frostbite hypothermia so there is concern for people who are unhoused outdoors your pets too so we do need to keep a very close eye on this blast of arctic air heading into the weekend but the good news is that it won't last temperatures will moderate sunday into monday we'll be back above freezing by monday kate thank you alistair that's all for now for more extended video and full online articles Stay tuned to saltwire.com and you can find us on YouTube, Instagram and Twitter. I'm your host, Kate Walker. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you back here tomorrow.